Here's what we're going to do. Connectness. Everything is one. Everything is connected. If you can learn another principle today, everything's connected. So if you do this, what are you doing to this, 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 this? I never thought these microbes were connected to the water cycle. Who would have thought that microbes are connected to the water cycle? No glues, no infiltration, no completed water cycle. Water cycle is complete when it goes into the soil, not run off and go to the river and lake. That's not a complete water cycle. Okay? This is proactive farming. You take care of the water the moment it lands on that spot. If it goes to the end of the field on your buffer, game's over. You can put all these nice conservation practices. You can do buffers. You can put terraces. But if you're still tilling in between the terraces, we fixed nothing. I got to capture sun energy right here. I got to stop the raindrop here. I got to feed and build aggregates right there. Anything else of that is reactive conservation. Nature uses patterns, holes and patterns. This is a human lung. Fractals. How many of you guys know about fractals? Fractals are cool, aren't they? Mathematical. Hey, Rock. Yes. Broccoli, mycorrhizal. Look at the patterns. Nature uses patterns. When you see a tree branch out, that's a fractal. I want you to understand cycles, patterns. Understand nature's connected. Okay, here's what we're going to follow. If I used one word for soil health, everybody write this down. You should see her video. Janine Banias. Write that down on TED. It is Two 20-minute videos of awesomeness. She is incredible. She's got whole talks that nature uses 3.8 billion years of research and 10 to 30 million species for well-adapted solutions. Do you know that Velcro was designed by the burr? The engineer sat on this dog's fur and said, hey, what do I make Velcro? Millionaire. She argues, let's learn some more here. Do you know this is in Africa? They're using the termite mounds to mimic their air conditioning system, and they're putting in buildings, reducing their energy input by 90%. Biomimicry. New robotics. Elephant trunk. Biomimicry has been around for a long time, folks. Ancient scriptures say, watch the beasts. Look at the animals. Do you know how I never knew about biomimicry? My education got in the way. Eight years of college got in the way. What did Einstein say? You never let your education get in the way of your learning. Okay, here's how we're going to mimic today. Prairie and forests. What do we see here that we want to mimic? What are the principles we talked about? Come on, audience. What does a prairie and forest have in common right there? Diversity. What else? Come on. Feed me. Give me goosebumps here. Synergy. Work with me. Synergy. They got synergy. What else do you see out there in those pictures? They're covered 24-7. Do, do you see the co-op fertilizing it? What else is going on? Diversity. It's covered. What else? Is it covered 24-7? Yes. Symbiotic relationships. Yes. It's diverse. It's covered. We're missing some other ones. Come on. They both have animals in the system, right? So guess what we did in our agriculture systems? They're not covered, they're not diverse, and they have no animals in the system. They're in feedlots, okay? So look at the soils differences. Forest, the way we farm, same two soils. Now, some people say, well, Ray, you're making all this up, really? Pat, look at this. Dr. Odom, Piper, Jensen, Dendemir, Altieri, all these guys says, Nature has principles that should be applied in our agro-systems and they should have been there for years. We've known this. We've known this. Okay, the principles are constant, the methods are different. If I send you to Kansas, you're still going to apply the same principles, but the methods are going to be different. Kansas only gets, Western Kansas gets 15, 16 inches of rain. Should it still be covered? You better believe it. I should be more judicious with the principles. In fact, I mimic the prairie over there. You should probably not be farming there. It should be more grazing systems. Okay? Your template's right there. Your template's that forest. 
I'm going to show you as we walk in the field today how the forest soil looks and comparing to some of your soils. Okay. Now we've been taught this is the, everything has the same parameters. Well, I'm going to here to tell you, folks, these are not equally important. This is what it is. Biology builds the physical and it helps regulate the chemistry. Who builds organic matter? Biology does. So you can hold more cations, you have more regulation, that's why your soils are highly buffered. That's why they say highly buffered, organic matter. So there's biology. Now, I want to ask every, how many of you guys farm in here, raise your hand. Okay, how many of you use this tool religiously? And you're walking through every one of your fields and smelling your soil, counting earthworms, looking for aggregation, religiously. Raise your hand. That's what I thought. <laughs> you know what we do now? I don't walk out until we pull a shovel, didn't we, Dave? What's the first thing we did on the farm? We dug a shovel, right, Pat? It sure did. Okay, this is what I want to see. Because why? There it is. This is what you're dealing with. It's a aquatic ecosystem. It runs on water and carbon. Okay? Look how elegant. That cottage cheese, those aggregations are fused together to make a subterranean universe where all these organisms live. What do you think Andy One Tillage Pass does? Destroys it. Oh, yeah, let's mess up the house. And then we'll build compost and bring it back in and use ancient sunlight. <laughs> we can use covers and reduce that. Now, how about this baby? Now, this is emotional. <laughs> right here, look at that. I just wanted to touch your heartstrings right there. Look at that. This was taken in a no-till field in Quebec, Canada. A special camera at night. Look at I never thought earthworms would do that. Whoa. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Do you know they can take a whole forest floor down in a whole summer? They want food. So this is why David Brandt does not go at his field by himself at night. <laughs> He'll disappear. <laughs> Where's David? I don't know. They took him. All you hear is earthworms going, they, they got him, man. Poor, poor David's gone. How about that earthworm? I said, Mark, you go check the field. <laughs> no, Ray, you go check it. <laughs> ah, that's Australia. Oh, I'm not going out there. Uh-uh. Now, why do I care? Okay, now, when we go in the field today, this is what all the spheres I want to see present. We're going to see a negratosphere. Drillosphere is the earthworm. We're going to see the detritosphere. That's the residue. Agratosphere is the cottage cheese. This is the residue sphere. Inside the cottage cheese are pores and rhizosphere. We're going to see where we want to see all this present. This is, look, oh, research. Bear, Coleman, Grossley, Hendricks. Love this paper. Hier hierarchical approach to evaluating the significance of soil biodiversity to biogeochemical cycling. Say that quickly. <laughs> It was, it was published in, a, it was done in 1995. 1995, great paper. I definitely recommend it. So we're going to see this. Now, electron microscope, no-till field up to nine millimeters. Look at the top of the pores. Look at a conventional field. Remember why I was telling you the water don't infiltrate? Look at here. Electron microscope. Okay. Now, here's what I want to see. Look at the cottage cheese, tilled, no till. This is what we're going to see today when we go in the field. Look at this. How many have sandy soils? Look at here, Pat. Those are sand grains, became dark coated. Now, Pat, how did they come coated like that? Mycorrhizae, biology. The biology, the metabolic, they coat those particles. Look how dark it gets coated. Now I have cation exchange capacity. Now I can hold on to nutrients. That's sand. I've seen no-till sand dark getting coated with those particles. Now, okay, compaction. How do we fix compaction? What is your name back there? Tom. Tell me, Tom, how do we fix compaction usually? What do we do? What's a typical farmer thing we do for compaction? <laughs> Horsepower, right, baby? How do we? That's a compaction issue. 
That's roots breaking down. Ah, yeah. What are they doing? What are those roots doing? How is it breaking it down? How? Give me some more. What's going on? That's rock. That is rock, guys. Sending out exudates that are dissolving yeah. rock. And like okay, so as they're respiring, they come in contact with water, they release carbonic water and CO2s, carbonic acids, exoenzymes, the mycorrhizae and the bacteria exude can break those inorganic substances and get, make their living off it. Biology. Oh, I took this in Hawaii five months ago. That is solid lava. How is that growing there? Little bacteria, the spores land, seed lands in a crack, water gets in there, primary succession, it takes a foothold. These plants release these powerful acids. How would you like to farm this, Dave? Yeah. You know where that is? Australia. Yeah. You think you have it tough? <laughs> Look what they have. I have a question for you, audience. How come this is not the same color all the way through? That's calcium deposits of an old ocean bottom. Salts. Yeah. Look at the biology taking the foothold. I want you to walk away how powerful it is. Do not underestimate the power of the biology. Okay. Our mixes are going to look like this. Why do we want our cover crop mixes to look like the prairie? Different depths. To have different canopies. This is what we're bringing ecological memory back. That's why you're going to see a what? How many mix out there do we have? Six, seven, eight mix? Six, yeah. yeah. Seven, eight. We're going to mimic that architecture. Because they're captured uh, nutrients differently. They all exude different chemicals. We're going to bring in a 10. If you put a 10-way mix, it's like bringing a 10-way ten, ten rotation in one year. We're capturing energy differently. We're, and we're uh, bringing ecological memory back. Okay. This is the thing about we need to realize. This is the most critical nutrient in the soil. Carbon. Our soils are carbon depleted. Why is carbon the most critical? Because it's the bonding point of all the chemicals. It drives the system. It's the food that drives the biology. Our soils are so carbon depleted. This is why we have our issues. Aggregation, carbon. They build the carbon. They run the system. It's carbon. Organic matter is 58% carbon. Okay? Now, look what happened. I don't this know if we have time for this. I'm a climate well, let's just do this real quick because it's so cool. What you're looking at is a supercomputer model of carbon dioxide levels in the Earth's atmosphere. The visualization compresses one year of data into a few minutes. Carbon dioxide is the most important greenhouse gas affected by human activity. About half of the carbon dioxide emitted from fossil fuel combustion remains in the atmosphere, while the other half is absorbed by natural land and ocean reservoirs. In the Northern Hemisphere, we see the highest concentrations are focused around major emission sources over North America, Europe, and Asia. Look at the date. Notice how the gas doesn't stay in one place. The dispersion of carbon dioxide is controlled by the large-scale weather patterns within the global circulation. What did we do in April? All over the country, see how it got red? We till. Tillage is going on at massive landscape area. During spring and summer now in the look Northern what Hemisphere, happens. Plants absorb a substantial amount of carbon dioxide. Now look dioxide when the plants start growing. Thus April. removing some of the gas from the atmosphere. Look at that. Look at me. We see this change in the model as the red and purple colors start to fade. Look at this. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. Do you mean if we covered the planet, we could fix our climate issues? Hmm. Now. If we build our soils 1 to 2% organic matter, we could sequester all the CO2 that's been emitted by man in the last 100 years. Say again. If we build our soils 1 to 2%, we could sequester all the carbon that's been emitted in the last 100 years. The second largest carbon sink in the world is the soil. Ocean's number one, soil's number two. You see where we, how powerful this is? But most of our lands through the globe are uncovered. 
was once all grassland. 